and slow strangulation. If you're a really heavy person, you're going to want to be dropped a shorter distance, otherwise your head could probably pop off. Now, if you're a very light person, let's say your neck didn't snap because you didn't get dropped far enough and you're still alive, you could possibly flail or you're going to start suffocating to death as a noose tightens around your neck and ultimately you might not die. It could be a very long and drawn out painful process. The long drop calculation table specifies the exact length of rope necessary to break anyone's neck, no matter how much they weigh. And by 1913, executioners agree that a neck breaks best when snapped with a thousand foot-pounds of energy. They would pre-weigh the person they were going to be executing. And by doing that, they could determine the height of the rope to let him drop. Even though they had the table for reference, certain things could go wrong. One, if their muscle structure was slightly different. Uh, some people that are, you know, really muscular might have a really muscular neck. That'll stop the rope from snapping their neck. The condemned had its last meal and was weighed before his last meal. Then he would weigh a lot more and possibly could have his head snapped off. And it also probably depended on who made the ropes. Because if you had, you know, one person one time make a rope and the other person another time make a rope, they might have done it slightly different, which therefore couldn't hold the loads anymore. Another problem with it is how you, how you actually measure the rope to get you your distance. Rope slip, you know, your knot could be in a different location. Uh, you just need to have that measurement 100% correct. Otherwise, you could end up with these problems. Well, with the long drop uh, hanging, uh, that was intended to be an improvement over the standard drop uh, and the short drop hangings. And the whole principle behind it is to take the individual's weight and to calculate how many feet they need to actually drop in order to su successfully fracture uh, the neck. Remember that once you uh, fracture the spinal column, the vertebral bodies, all you have left is soft tissue and then it becomes an engineering equation as to how much energy is placed on the non-supported neck, in other words the soft tissues, the skin, uh, the musculature and so forth, uh, that could actually uh, tear and rip the uh, head from the body at that point. Another major improvement of the long drop is the position of the knot on the neck. By placing the coils of the rope under the left ear, the rope snaps the head back at the end of the drop. This delivers enough force to break the vertebra. They realized if they properly placed the knot on the left side of the neck, the head would snap and it would cause that rapid fracture. Placing the knot on the left side was the best side and would cause the most instantaneous uh, fracture and death. But did the early gallows engineers make the proper calculations? Testing a replica of the long drop gallows is the best way to find out. As a condemned would walk up the stairs in a strange twist of fate, the work energy that he is producing by going up these stairs when he stops on his platform creates potential energy. When he comes over to the noose and is dropped a certain distance, that becomes kinetic energy. The condemned walking up the stairs is creating all the energy that ultimately will kill him. This replica includes a simple mechanical system to open the trap door and send the condemned to his death. Back in the day, what they would do is they would take a pin connected to a rope through a pulley system. The sandbag is released, it actually will go through and pull through some more pulleys the pin that is connected to the trap door. That's a rapid effect, trap door will go extremely quick, therefore the potential energy turns into kinetic energy a lot faster, so the person will not lose energy as he's falling. The engineers want to first test the precise amount of force applied on the rope when it jerks to a stop. The long drop should generate a thousand pounds of force, but this seems like a lot of weight for standard grade hemp rope. Attached in line with the noose is a dynamometer. It will measure the sudden force of the load created by the falling dummy. We're clear. Clear. Okay. Here we go. One, two, three. Whoa. The rope snaps unexpectedly as the dummy hits the bottom of the drop. 
Dynamiter read 640 pounds, which means that 640 pounds of force was launched onto his neck as he fell. So 640 pounds is actually the breaking strength of this rope. That also shows you the importance of how good your rope needed to be back in the day. So how did 19th century executioners hang people without snapping the rope? They pre-stretched the rope the night before so it would expand like a rubber band rather than snap on impact. For this next test, the engineers string up a pre-stretched rope to see if dropping a person too far will indeed trigger a decapitation. The engineers have intentionally chosen a rope that's three inches too long. If the dummy falls too far, the impact will overwhelm the neck and cause it to tear apart. Three, two, one! The head of the dummy rips off completely. Although hangings are usually public events, spectators find decapitations unsettling. This time, the engineers match up a five and a half foot length of rope with the 185 pound anthropomorphic dummy. They're relying completely on the 1913 long drop calculation table. Three, two, one. The dummy's head remains attached and there's no chance of a drawn out strangulation. While these mock executions take several minutes to perform, by the mid-20th century, a hanging execution takes just 15 to 20 seconds between the time a prisoner leaves his cell to the time he falls through the trap door. The cold-blooded efficiency of hangings culminates with nearly 13,000 men and 500 women dying in the United States alone. The principles behind the long drop now save lives instead of taking them. Information from ratings charts similar to the long drop are used in rock climbing. Engineers design dynamic ropes that stretch when a climber falls to absorb the lethal forces. Of all the modern day execution machinery, there is one in particular that fails more often because of human error. This form of capital punishment merges a readily available technology, the rifle, with human physical skill to execute the condemned quickly and mercifully. Detail. Ready? They call it Aim. the firing squad. Fire. Here you have a modern technological device which had to be used in tandem by the person in order to kill someone. You really had kind of a melding of man and machine in order to carry out this execution. The civilian firing squad aims to execute criminals as efficiently as possible. It consists of three to five riflemen. Each stands 20 feet from the condemned. On the squad leader's command, firing begins and odds are that one of the bullets will instantly stop the heart. The firing squad exploits readily available rifle technology to quickly dispatch condemned criminals. In theory, it makes sense. Militaries have used firing squads to punish desertion and mutiny since the invention of the rifle in 1498. Especially in the military, rifles were readily available. Uh, you had marksmen right there, and they had plenty of ammo. It was the easiest way to execute someone. From the early 1900s to 1950, American civilian firing squads rely on the Springfield 30 caliber rifle. It's the most popular military sniper rifle and sees action in World War I, II, and the Korean and Vietnam conflicts. The Springfield is known as an incredibly powerful long-range weapon. Pick a rifle over a handgun because the rifle's more accurate, has a longer barrel, it's harder to shake, and you have a longer aim point. The longer barrel of a rifle gives it more accuracy over a handgun. The slightest waver in a pistol's line of sight sends the bullet off target dramatically. For the person in the chair, obviously this was very psychologically traumatizing even before they got riddled with bullets. Uh, you've got someone already bound, they're sitting in a chair, before the hood is placed on their head, they're probably seeing the people who are going to be responsible for their death.